least. You know, we're not equipped to carry burdens. You know that, don't you? It'll beat you down. If you study out uh, Matthew chapter 6, it'll really tear your body down. We're not equipped for that. Jesus said that we're to cast all our cares upon him, for he cares for us. Hallelujah. We say we do, but we don't. I'm going to tell you when you know that you haven't done it. When you say, yeah, I cast it on him, but you're still trying to figure out how, how to get it done. You haven't cast it on him. Because when you cast it on him, you're through with it. You're no longer trying to figure it out. You move on to the next thing. Hallelujah. Let go and let God. Well, let's pray so we can get started here. Father, thank you once again for another opportunity to come into your house to fellowship with one another, to fellowship with you. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that as we study your word, we thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic spirit. We thank you, Father, that we decrease and you increase, all of you and none of us. Anoint every ear in here to hear your word, every heart to receive it, and every spirit to contain it. I ask, Father, that you thank through my mind and speak through my vocal cords all that you'd have me to say to these your sheep and father we'll be ever so mindful to always give you the praise and always give you the glory it's in Jesus name and everyone in agreement say amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah okay we're teaching on the subject of anger management and we're in the first teaching in this we're talking about understanding anger and we're specifically right now we're talking about the nature of anger and we said anger's nature has two characteristics constructive and destructive anger is not necessarily a bad thing it can be used to build up because that's what constructive is to build up but it can be used to tear down too and we as believers we're to use it constructively okay now I know that I've heard people say you need to get rid of anger. To do that means that anger never comes your way or, or you never get upset. I, I understand what they mean when they say that, but the Bible tells me in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, it says, be angry. So that tells me that I'm going to get angry. But it says, sin not. It's what you do with the anger. And, and in this next uh, subject uh, uh, topic that we're going to talk about which is constructive anger, anger we've already talked about destructive anger now we're going to talk about when anger is constructive in this we're going to talk about righteous anger there's a righteous indignation okay but before we get to that I want to share some points on when anger is constructive when it's when it builds up all right now before before we get started even with that I want to share a uh, uh, I guess it will be a testimony for another lady. One of the uh, places that we go to, I'm teaching this same subject. And sh this lady had a disagreement with another lady. They were a real close friend, and they kind of fell out with one another. She was angry. And she told us Monday when we went there that she went to the lady. She apologized. She forgave the lady, and she even did her a favor. And she said, I felt so good afterwards. You know, that's one of the ways that we can overcome anger what she did is to forgive and then she did something for her you know when you anger with somebody that's the last thing you want to do is do something for someone you know what I mean so she did something for her all healing especially in the emotional realm broken hearts and different things like that begins with forgiveness if you want to receive healing you have to forgive because as long as you are holding resentment and animosity what happens is you rehearse the hurt anytime you tell somebody about it you're rehearsing the hurt anytime you think about it you're rehearsing the hurt the purpose of rehearsal is to get better at when actors rehearse their roles they're doing it so that they can get better at it you don't need to rehearse the hurt let it go. Let go and let God. Forgive them. Move on. You, you don't, that don't mean that you got to be all up under, under them, but you need to forgive them. To forgive a person is to release them from punishment. 
That means that you no longer want them to be punished for what they've done to you. That don't mean that you have to hang out with them, but you no longer want punishment for them. As long as you want punishment for them, you haven't forgiven them. So we're going to talk about some things like that tonight. Hallelujah. All right, we're talking about when anger is constructive. When the result of anger contributes to love, truth, and righteousness, anger is then constructive. When the result of your anger contributes to love, truth, and righteousness, anger is constructive because constructive is to build up. All right? So we're going to look at some different points here now. Anger is constructive when we don't try to avenge ourselves. Now, we talked about that when we talked about uh, when anger was destructive. We said that if we try to avenge ourselves, when somebody does something to us, anger becomes destructive. And we, we read Romans uh, 12 and 19 where the Bible says that God is the one that gets vengeance, not us. All right? You can also find that in Proverbs 20 and 22. And you can find it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6, where it talks about God is the one who gets vengeance, okay? But what I want to do, you know, Jesus is our example. He's the one that we need to follow. A lot of people have been church hurt because they're following a man or a woman, which is good if a preacher, if you, if you have a preacher, praise the Lord. If you have a preacher, you, you, you are supposed to follow his example. But never take your eye off Jesus. Because a real preacher, a real pastor, will always point you to Jesus. He'll never point you to himself. He'll point you to Jesus, okay? So we should always follow Jesus. Jesus is the one that is to be our example, all right? So I want to show you what Jesus did when people did him wrong. Turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 2. Praise the Lord, Brother Bill. We have to pray for your leg tonight, ain't we? Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. First Peter chapter 2. And we, and we said anger is constructive when we don't seek vengeance for ourselves. First Peter chapter 2. Let's start at uh, verse 21. If you have it, say, I have it. It says, for to this you were called, that's talking about us now, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Okay? Watch this now. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. We're to follow that example. Now, deceit in the mouth is not just lying. Deceit in the mouth is speaking the opposite of the word of God. Because when you speak the opposite of the word of God, you are calling the word of God a liar. Oh, Y'all don't want to hear that, do you? When you walk around and talk about how sick you are, how bad it is, and the word says you are blessed, you are saying that the word is a liar. Hallelujah. Let's move on before y'all start throwing things. Verse 23 is where we want to get. It says, who, talking about Jesus, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. That means to be insulted. When he was insulted, he didn't insult in return. How many of us, as soon as somebody insults us, we return it right back? We, we insult them right back. But it says Jesus didn't do that. Why do we do it? Because we became offended. And if we don't deal with that offense, it turns to anger. All right? It says, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. Watch this. When he suffered, he did not threaten. When somebody hurt us, the first thing they do, what's wrong with you? Don't you know I hurt you? And there did that. I'm talking to, I'm talking to the choir now, okay? So, <laughs> talking to me. I ain't pointing nobody out now. <laughs> it says, when he suffered, he did not threaten. But what did he do? What did he do? He committed himself to him who judges righteously. What is that saying? Instead of him taking care of it, he put it in God's hand. He let God take care of it. That's what we're to do. That's, what, that's when anger becomes constructive because now you don't avenge yourselves. You allow God to take care of it for you. 
Amen. Because when you avenge yourself, you may you may take it overboard. You know, you may you may take it to a point where 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 it's not necessary. Amen. So anger is constructive when we don't try to avenge ourselves. All right. Anger is constructive when we direct our anger toward the problem or the sin and not the person. When somebody makes us angry, the first thing we do is attack the person. But instead of attacking the person, attack the problem. Attack what, what, what the person said or the sin that they may be in. The Bible teaches us that this is not a flesh and blood battle. This is a spiritual battle, all right? And just like you and I are controlled by the Holy Spirit or should be controlled by the Holy Spirit, people that are not saved are controlled by the enemy. And the enemy going to cause them to do things to make you angry. But what we do when we get angry, we want to jump on the person. We want to attack the person. You have to attack that spirit. A, a, a good example is that you have to turn there is in uh, Acts chapter 16 when Paul and Silas was uh, preaching the word this lady who, uh, who told fortunes kept following them and the Bible say Paul became aggravated so he turned around and instead of talking to the lady he spoke to that spirit and cast that spirit out of her see he Paul recognized that it wasn't her it was the spirit behind her Amen. Turn with me to Ephesians. Let me show you this in verse that we're to Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. Trying to help you here when you get angry, make sure that you use it constructively. And when you use it constructively, the, one of the ways that you do it is you attack the situation, the problem, and not the person. Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 12. Hallelujah. If you have it, say I have it. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Paul said, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So Paul told us there that when we are a type it's not the people it's not flesh and blood it's the spirit behind them that's causing them to sin so instead of attacking the person attack the problem what is the problem the spirit behind them start speaking to that spirit if it's a spirit of uh, anger coming at you you speak to that spirit of anger and command it to leave in the name of Jesus don't jump on the person because all the devil do is find another one. And then when you get angry and you start avenging yourself or you start getting violent, then you're getting out of the love walk. Now, Andrew quoted a verse when he was leaving off stage where Jesus said that they would know, uh, know that we're his disciples by the love that we have for one another. That's John 13, 35. The love that Jesus is talking about there is a kind of love that absorbs punishment. That means that when people talk about you, when people threaten you, when people take advantage of you, you absorb it. You don't retaliate. That's the kind of love he's talking about. See, he's not talking. See, the world has their way of loving. But when they see you and I operating in that kind of love, what it does, it draws them to us. Because they want to know how can we do that. And then that's our opportunity to tell them is through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because that's the only way you can operate in that kind of love is through the power of God. Amen. We can't do it on our own. It takes God to do it. But we got to surrender to it. Even in Matthew, Jesus said people that uh, persecute you and despise you and, and take advantage of you, he said pray for them. Now, we quote the scriptures and we know the scriptures, but we don't do them. As soon as we're in that situation, we, we, we get in the flesh. We start cursing them out. Some, some Christians curse out other people. We start cursing them out. We get violent. You know, we start threatening them. We get mad with the person. We don't have nothing else to do with them. 
when you stop having anything to do with them, you're taking it out on that person. But when you attack that spirit, you still, you're still there for that person. Amen? I know, I know. This is not a shout me down. So anger is constructive when we direct our anger toward the problem or the sin and not the person. If we, if we, really, if we really took that in, you wouldn't walk around here mad with one another. You wouldn't be mad with people. You wouldn't be offended. You know why? Because the devil can't offend you unless you allow him to. We have power over all the power and authority of the enemy. Luke 10, 19. And, it's, and, and the verse Jesus goes on to say, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So if you get hurt or offended, it's because you allowed it to. Allowed, allowed yourself to be hurt and offended. People are going to say negative things. And the people that say negative things are going to be the ones that's closest to you. It's going to be your relatives. It's going to be your children. It's going to be your siblings. It, it may even be your parents. It's going to be your co-workers. It's going to be your neighbor. Because no, no one else is close enough to you to say anything to hurt you. So the enemy is going to use them. And what happens is we get offended, we get upset, and we stop speaking to them. You got relatives that don't speak to one another right now because they got angry. They got angry with one another. I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again. In one of the nursing homes that we go to, uh, this lady is going home to be with the Lord now, but she, she told us a story. She said her and her, her, and her neighbor was best friends. They, they taught Sunday school together. They did everything together, okay? But somewhere down the line, they got mad with one another. They got upset with one another. And now you got two women not speaking to one another in church, in Sunday school, not speaking to one another, living next door to one another, not speaking. And she said that went on for over 30 years. And I asked her, I said, uh, what was you angry about? And she couldn't even remember. Couldn't even, couldn't even remember why they stopped speaking to one. How can you be in Sunday school teaching children with your neighbor, your friend, and y'all ain't even talking? Anger. They got anger. And, and what it was, they was attacking the person instead of the spirit. See, anger is constructive when we attack the problem, the sin, and not the person. Amen? Y'all all right with that? All right. Anger is constructive when we desire to see those who have offended us restored in their spiritual walk. Instead of wanting to see them tore down, or instead of wanting to see them fail, instead of wanting to see them lose because they done did something to upset us, when we use our anger constructively, we're going to do what we can to restore them. We're going to restore them in right relationship with God. We, we're going to restore them back in their spiritual walk. And I'm going to tell you something, it's beneficial for you to do that. Because if they're coming against you and you can get them back in their right walk, then they're going to stop coming against you. But the first thing we want to do, I, I hope he loses his job. And, and if he keep harassing me, I'm going to call his boss. You go behind his back or her back. And you start telling the people that's, that they know how bad they are. What's the purpose of that? The purpose of that is to hurt them. The purpose of that is to cause them to lose in their situation. But that ain't what God told us to do. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Brother Chuck, we got food out there? There's lots of food out there, y'all, so don't leave. Don't leave here hungry. The buffet is laid out. <laughs> A sweet buffet. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. If you have it, say, I have it. This is Paul. He says, brethren, if a man is overtaken in his trespass, your Bible may say a fault. It says, you who are spiritual are to talk about him and let everybody know how bad he is. 
Does it say that? Your Bible says that? No. It says you are to what? Restore. You're not to go behind him and talk about him and talk behind his back. You're to restore him. But because you have allowed your anger to be destructive instead of constructive, you're not talking about it. Telling everybody how bad he is. Telling everybody what he did to you. And now you and then some of us get so 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 angry that we start trying to dig in the past. Dig up stuff on him. Bring up stuff that God don't even remember. But that ain't what he, he say do. He say restore. When, you, when your anger is constructive, you are now trying to restore this person. It says, I'm going to read it again. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, my Bible says, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So just like they doing what they do, you can be tempted to do it too. Because some of us get arrogant. Some of us think it can't happen to me. And now don't get me wrong. In a sense, that's a good confession if it's done in meekness. You understand? You confess that in meekness. But if you're doing it out of arrogance, bro, look out. You finna fall. This, what, how does scripture go? Uh, a fall come. Uh, destruction, Yes. That, and that's what I think that's Proverbs 16, 18. That that's that says that when you are arrogant or you are proud, you finna you finna crash hard. So we have to we have to we have to have a, a a spirit of meekness about us. People respond to gentleness. Sometimes we may be doing the right thing, but we're doing it harshly. If we got a gentle kind meek spirit about us people receive that you know why because people are looking for love and that's part of the fruit of love is meekness gentleness all that's part of the fruit of love so if we're operating in love and 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 this person does something to upset us instead of trying to tear them down what we're going to do is build them up we're going we're gonna to do everything we can to restore them back in the walk, the spiritual walk of where God wants them at. Amen? So let's go over these again. Anger is constructive when we don't try to avenge ourselves. Anger is constructive when we direct the anger toward the problem or sin and not the person. And anger is constructive when we when we desire to see those who have offended us restored back in their spiritual walk. Now, we can sit in here, and Brother Chuck taught on this Sunday, we can sit in here and amen this all we want, but you're not going to get the results of this until you do it. We got to make up our mind that we, we're not going to allow people to cause us to get out of our love walk. That's the goal of the enemy. Do you know if he stopped your love walk, he stopped your power? The power that God has provided for us is tied up in love. Faith works by love, Galatians 5 and 6. I like the amplified version of that. It says faith is energized by love. A lot of times your faith is not performing for you or not working for you properly because you're not walking in love. You know, in uh, John chapter 17, it talks about how faith is a sl should, should be a slave for you. Faith, faith is your slave. Faith works for you. But it won't work if you're not in love. It won't work if you're holding animosity and resentment toward others. It won't work if you're using your anger destructively and not constructively. You know, that's why we have what is called constructive criticism. Even when we're point out wrong with people we have to do it in love and we have to do it in a sense of building them up the reason for correcting a person is not to point out how bad they are to tear them down it's to point out what they're doing wrong so they can be built up so they won't keep doing that are you hearing what I'm saying see a lot of times when we're pointing out the wrong in a person because we're angry 
we're doing it in a sense where it's tearing them down and not building them up. We should be building them up. If they're doing wrong, okay, this is wrong. But the purpose of you telling them that it's wrong is so that they'll get out of that and start doing right. Because God has a calling on all of our lives. That person that's, that's walling in that sin, that God has a, uh, a calling on their life. And, and, and also we have to remember that people don't respond at the level that you respond if they're not receiving the word at the level you receive. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is a lot of times we expect people to behave like we do but if they're not getting the word that you're getting, they're not going to behave like you do. So you have to be, that's, you know, you may walk up to somebody that, that all they do is talk about how sick they are or, 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 or their problem all the time. Well, they may be in a church that's not teaching them to talk, to speak the word. Like Brother Chuck said Sunday, you know, we, we met people that, that got angry because we said they can be healed. One guy got so angry, he acted like he wanted to fight. Bro, you can stay sick. That's your privilege. Don't hit me. You know what I mean? Stay, <laughs> stay sick. <laughs> but seriously, but what you do with that? Do you, do you tear them down? No. Every opportunity you get, if, if, if he allow you, uh, they allow you to, encourage them. And don't get mad because they're speaking what, what, what you've been taught not to speak because they haven't learned. God showed me that a long time ago because I was very judgmental. I was almost fair, like the Pharisee. Legally, I put the word on you, but I put it on you the wrong way. And God showed me that if a person is not doing what I do with the word, they will not be at the level that I am. Just like there's people at a level in their faith walk that I'm not there yet. So, they, so they're doing things that is not working for me yet. It ain't that I don't, it, it ain't that I can't do it, it's that I haven't learned or developed in an area to do it. Because the same thing that they do, I can do. But we have to grow. All right? And a lot of times we get angry at people because they don't do things the way we do it. You got to control your anger because you can run people out of church People are church hurt right now because somebody got ang because they got angry with somebody for saying something. If people come and share stuff with you, it's not for you to talk to other people about. Because believe me, it'll get back to them. We, you know, we say, I want, you know, we have this special friend, and we say, you know what, I want to share something with you, but you can't tell nobody. They say, I won't tell nobody. But they're going to tell the person that they feel this, that they that close to too. Okay. And then that person going to tell somebody that they think that close. And before you know it, it's going to get back to the, to the person that said it. And they're going to be hurt in a different manner. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If, 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 if a person trusts you enough to come to you with something private or, or something serious in their life, be mature enough to shut your mouth and not God pray with them call them up every day and encourage them what you're doing you're trying to restore them back to where they were but a lot of them are not coming back to where they were because we instead of running to the throne with them we run to the phone against them we go child let me tell you so and so just came to my house and you know what they did you won't believe this that's not what you do. Because soon as she or he hang up with you, they're going to call. Ah, Flo just called me and told me what, what James did. Ah. And that's how it starts. And by the time it get to the sixth person, it, that story be done changed tremendously. They may say they stole a, a pack of gum out the store. By the time they get to the sixth, child, they done robbed the bank. You understand? Anger would cause people to do and say things that they shouldn't. We got to mature or be mature enough not to allow anger to cause us to apply it destructively. We need to apply it constructively.
Amen. Next week, we're gonna, I'm going to show you in Scripture where Jesus used righteous anger. Where he got angry, but he got angry out of righteousness. Amen. Y'all all right with that? Father God, we just thank you again. Thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is making a mark in all our lives that cannot be erased. And we thank you, Father, that we're growing in your love. We thank you that you, your love has been shed abroad in our hearts. And through the power of that love and the power of the Holy Spirit, we're able to love and forgive others just as you've loved and forgiven us, Lord. And we thank you so much. And Father, I just give you praise and honor. I thank you for another opportunity to minister your word, to teach your word with simplicity and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, for those that are listening on the internet, if you're not saved, you can be saved. All you have to do is accept Jesus. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead, and I accept I, and, and I confess you right now as my Lord and Savior, and I thank you for filling me with your Holy Spirit. And you are saved. And we invite you to come out to Faith International Christian Center, 7409 Manatee Avenue West, 34209, right? <laughs> Praise Jesus. Thank y'all.